तव मूर्ति विनोदकारी पलपन विसरे नहीं जो विसारी जो गल चरण सोल चिन्न जेह नजर समी पे रहो अमारी एह नजर समी पे रहो अमारी एह घनश्याम महाराज नी जय हरि कृष्ण महाराज नी जय स्वामी नारायण भगवान नी जय Supreme Almighty, our beloved Gansham Maharaj, the path maker to our liberation, our dear Puja Guruji, Puja Santo, Puja Bhagatji, Sri Ji Bhagat, Bhagat, what's your name? Vinay, and all of you devotees, Dada, Jai Swami Narayan. So, you know, for the past couple of months, we've been talking about the life of Sadhguru Muktanand Swami, an elite saint in Bhagwan Swaminarayan's uh, divine sect. About 230 years ago, when this uh, whole religion was developed, established by Bhagwan Swaminarayan, uh, from his divine abode, he brought 500 elite santos, saints, and from the elite santos, the top saint, um, where there's a book written on his life, is Sadhguru Muktanand Swami. So we're discussing about him and uh, how, how he is, his, what lessons we can learn from his life and um, things that we can learn so we can develop in satsang for the age of this generation of the 21st century for kids like Shriji Bhagat who are only six or seven years old and those others who are viewing who may be older, um, so on and so forth. So, just like how Swami had very good qualities of a saint, in the world, people can't see these qualities, like humbleness. Let me give you a couple examples. Um, or like Mahima, the glory of God and His saints, or affection, or even the smallest uh, quality as a saint, where... Um, peaceful, peace-hearted, shant, you can say, tranquil. But, more over, in the world, people see qualities like, if we look outside, this person's a good singer. We can see that directly, right? Or this person's a good dancer. Or this person is a good wrestler. Or he plays very good football or he is really good at playing on his iPad. I don't know who that is. Don't look around. I'm talking to you. Uh, or anything, so on and so forth. We can see these things because they're very uh, common to us. You don't need glasses to see. You can see it with the naked eye. But to see the qualities of a sadhu, it's very difficult. You have to stay with them. You have to learn them. Moreover, Sriji Bhagat, what you can say, what qualities do you see in Muktanand Swami? So far, have you seen? Do you remember any? You know what qualities are. I gave you an example. Examples. Like uh, Swami, uh, Swami is very humble. That's an example. Um, it was the story, I think... It was Gopanand Swami mm -hmm. and Muktan Swami and the Swami that was with Gopanand Swami. Mm -hmm. He wanted to run away. Uh -huh. Muktan, and then Muktan said, there's no reason to run away. So he took him. But Gunaditan Gun Swami mm -hmm. thought that he was taking him away from his group mm -hmm. and then wasn't happy. And they weren't talking for a week to each other. Mm -hmm. And then after... Maharaj asked with so when, when so many people were there. And then Gurdhan Ita Swami was doing Danvarts to um Danvarts to Muktana Swami. Okay. But Muktana Swami was still humble. 
So you like that quality of Swami. Yes. You remembered very well. I want to tell all of you who are viewing, he's only seven years old. Seven. Yes. Yet uh, on such a day of Sunday, especially at such an age, uh, who comes and listens to Katha? And those who are watching, I'm also including you, so who are, whoever is viewing. But uh, in the world, if we look even outside where there's cars going, people walking on the sidewalk during the day or the night, how many people have entry in this temple? Meaning it's open to the public. There is no, uh, you know, there's no locks. It's open to the public. Yet how many people come to the mandir and have the darshan of Maharaj, Santos, and come and listen? Meaning um, he's very fortunate and uh, he has probably done many, many uh, good merits in his past. Due to that, uh, you know, Bhagwan uh, has given you this opportunity of uh, serving him at a, at a very young age. So you're very lucky. That's what I want to tell you. Very fortunate. Okay. Now let's get on to the story on Swami's life. So just like how I was saying, there's qualities. In the world, we can see that there's outside qualities. Muktan Swami was the only saint that possessed mostly everything. Inside qualities as a saint and also outside qualities such as singing, dancing, playing musical instruments. So today's story is on Swami's versatility and how he not only won the hearts of those uh, by his saintliness, but also won the hearts of those with his um, unique uh, attributes, uh, unique qualities, and his versatility, as we will see. So this prasang, this incident, is taking place in Gadda, where Maharaj is residing. So here's what happened. Some musicians from Gwalior. Gwalior is a, um, it's a city in Madhya Pradesh. Uh, it's a, uh, Madhya Pradesh is a state inside of India, just like how we have the 50 states. There's a state called Madhya Pradesh in India, and inside there's a city called Gwalior. Um, so musicians, okay? You have, uh, in school, I'm guessing you have band, right? Or kids that play, you have band, different, different uh, musical instruments kids play, yeah? In the same way, there's musicians that came. You know, some playing violin, some playing flute, uh, some playing tabla and sitar and so on and so forth. So they came from the city of Gwalior to the village of Gadara um, after establishing their superiority everywhere, meaning they traveled around the lands and they became famous. They became very popular and great. You know how just like how in the United States that there's many, many bands. Go ahead. I think I know the story. Um, hold that thought, okay? Okay. Uh, so there's many, many bands and different kinds of musicians that go around and tour in the United States, uh, becoming famous and so on and so forth. Same like, uh, same like that incident, these musicians went around India and became famous. And they landed upon the village of Gadara, where Bhagwan Swami Narayan and all his santos were residing. They're very proud of their victories and sent a call to Sriji Maharaj to take part in a competition of instrumental and vocal music. So what happened was they challenged Bhagwan. They found out that, uh, you know, Bhagwan himself so believed that many, many believe that, you know, God himself has arrived. So let us go and challenge him because they're very, very confident, overconfident. You met, have you met any people who are overconfident? Meaning, um, suppose that you're in a competition, uh, you're playing football, let's say that, and you're facing your friends, but they know that you're very good. But they're, over, they're very confident and overconfident, saying that we're going to beat this team no matter what. We can do it with their eyes closed. Have you met people like that? Anyone? That happened once when I was playing. It, it wasn't a football game. Uh -huh. I was just playing with my friends regularly mm -hmm. after, my, after my running class. Okay. We had a field that, we, that they played football in high school. Uh -huh. So we, my friends and I were there. That's why we run track. Mm. So then we played football there. They, were, they thought their team was going to win, 
I have seven. My team won. Because they're overconfident, right? They're saying our team's gonna win because their team is very better than mine for real. Uh huh. Because their team wants more than mine. Yeah. And so I only want like twelve, two or three times. They yeah. want like five or six times. Well, no. Can you believe that? But still, you beat them, right? Yeah. Because Bhagwan was on your side. Do you understand? And because you're doing jumps right now. There you go. So. They challenge Maharaj, uh, and they're like, you know, we want to go into a singing competition with you. Let's see what happens. So, they further, uh, they further prayed that they should be awarded a big prize if they win. So they wanted rewards as well. They didn't want anything to do with pleasing Bhagwan or anything. That's a lesson that we should learn. You know, we come to Mandir, Triji Bhagat. You come almost every day, or every at least every two days. You do seva for santos. Uh, you come and do dunrat here. You do darshan of Bhagwan. You help out the dadas. You help out Bhagaji over here. Many, many different tasks you do. My question to you is, do you have any kind of request or any kind of wish for all the things that you do here? Maybe doing five maras or a thousand jumps. Bhagwan, if I do a thousand jumps, get me an A tomorrow on math. How about example, okay? Or if I do, if I serve Santos, then get me an iPad by Black Friday. Another example. <laughs> um, <clears throat> I would not want anything except just going to Akshardham. And going with Guruji. Going with Guruji and Maharaj. That's it. Because I don't want a reward. Why not? I mean, you're going to go to Akshardham anyways. Yeah. So why not take it with your reward? Because after I go to Akshardham, uh -huh. what's the reward for? I don't have it anymore. No, you'll have it. It'll come with you magically it, there. It doesn't. It doesn't? Wow. No, in Akshardham. Uh-huh. I saw the only thing you do in Akshardham is do Dhyana Maharaj. Uh -huh. So nothing would come with you. You'll just go by, your body will go by itself. So Fantastic. You For don't need a reward because after you get it, what do you have to do with it after you go to Akshardham? Nothing. It's it's not going to come with you? No. I don't know. These, for the those only who reward are, is that you go to Akshardham. For those who are viewing, uh, I don't even know how high of a knowledge this is. Such a child and I don't... I don't know where he's getting all this information from. Probably Santos uh, Association and his <coughs> parents. But uh, for those who are watching, he's only seven years old. But I promise I did not set this up. Just want to clarify that. These are all answers from his own mind. Um, I'm asking for the first time. Yes. Is that correct? It is. Yes. I have never asked you this before. Uh, regarding this and giving you answers or anything? Uh, that I recall of? No. no. Uh, but it's very good that we learn that these uh, very, you can say, uh, <coughs> egotistical musicians, they wanted a prize for uh, winning. Yet, as devotees of Bhagwan Swaminarayan, when we come to Mandir, or when we're outside of Mandir doing Bhagwan's devotion, a very, very, um, you can say, a, a common, common disease is that even in outside religions, I can say, is uh, people perform devotion to get something from God. Very common. Um, you know, my father has cancer. Um, let me donate $5,000 so make his cancer magically disappear. Or, uh, you know, um, fix my uh, car and I will, you know, I will do five maras. Anything and everything. I mean, it, the list just goes on and on, right? Yet, um, the unique uh, part about Bhagwan Swaminarayan and his religion is that he teaches to do niskam bhakti. Meaning, there's two kinds of bhakti, devotion, niskam and sakam. Niskam is <coughs> desireless and sakam is with desire. Only in Bhagwan Swaminarayan's religion 
uh, with such a distinction, uh, with such importance and weight that uh, it teaches, Bhagwan Swamiran teaches, that do devotion, ask for nothing but the service of God, His saints and devotees, and everything else put on my shoulders. I will take care of it. If we believe Bhagwan to be Bhagwan, then doesn't He know what we want? I mean, if we believe Him to be the all-knower, all-doer, doesn't He know what is good for us more than we do? I mean, we even put faith in doctors, right? Saying that, oh, my leg hurts. So, even if my leg... Here, um, I got actually an uh, uh, example. So, one time, uh, one of our Swamis here, uh, his knee started hurting. So, his knee, every time he would sit, it would hurt. Uh, every time it would bend, it would hurt. So then he decided to uh, consult a doctor because it's been at least like two, three months, okay? So he went to the doctor. And the doctor, he came in the room for literally one minute, saw the knee, asked what happened. There was another person translating, told him this is what happened. And then this doctor, uh, like this big of an injection, just puts it inside his knee uh, with like, fluid like steroid fluid to make the the tendons you know they were swollen to make them uh, go down now such kind of a faith in a doctor we can put in just like that I mean Swami at that time wasn't even looking he was on this side and this doctor just sticks this uh, injection in with his knee and he before he knew it uh, most of the fluid was already inside his knee but seeing that it shows that we have faith in doctors, we have faith in cab drivers. We know that we want to go here to New York, right? Sriji Bhagat, you want to go to Nana's house, for example, in Queens. Now, you call a taxi driver and you tell them, Hello, yes, it's Sriji from New Jersey. I'd like to go to Queens, to Nana's house. He's like, what's the address? So you tell him the address. And you don't, you, you don't know who this man is. You don't know his name. You don't know how old he is. You don't know his credentials. You don't know anything or anything about him. Yet, we put complete faith in him. And we know that he's going to take us from here to Queens without driving off a bridge or without uh, taking us to Pennsylvania. In the same way, if we develop faith in Bhagwan, his sadhus, then the whole story becomes different. But going back to the base point, where they wanted some kind of a, a prize, they further prayed for a prize. Sri Jamaraj invited them into the evening assembly and gave them a befitting welcoming at a well-decorated venue. So Bhagwan, he held a grand assembly and he's like, Come on in, you know, uh, let's, let's see, we want you to perform. So he gave them man, ego, and welcomed them in according to their status. Swami tied, or Sriji Maharaj asked Muktanan Swami to perform. Swami tied Gugra on his feet. It's a, it's a kind of, a, uh, you've probably heard of it, it makes noise. Uh, you tied on your feet, you've seen it, right? Uh, on his feet, took kartals. These orange, these are called kartals. He took them uh, in, in his hands and he bowed down to Maharaj before singing. Another thing about Muktan Swami is that he knew he possessed this talent. He knew that he was good. Yet, the first thing he did was bow down to Maharaj, proving two things. Number one, he is humbleness. And number two, that whatever attribute he has is due to Bhagwan's grace. It's not because of his practice or his perfection at it, but it's due to Bhagwan's grace. Swami lifted one leg from the floor and with the toe of the other leg, he started slipping backwards while singing on the stroke of Kartals. In Bhagwan Swaminarayan's Vachnamr, Garda, 1st chapter 22nd, the heading of the Vachnamr, the singing without remembering God is as good as not singing at all. Sriji Bhagat, whenever you come to Mandir here, when you're doing Kirtan Bhakti, maybe singing Dun, 
playing uh, uh, kartals or the manjira or just singing dun. If you're not remembering Bhagwan, if your mind is somewhere else, then it's good as nothing. Let me ask you a question. If there was one million zeros, one million zeros, and someone gave a check to you and wrote one million zeros out and gave it to you, would there be any value? Why not? It's one million zeros. Zero. I don't understand. Speak into the mic. Zero is n zero is a number, except it's a number that may, that is no money. If you put one thousand zeros, it's no money. What uh, What about What about Okay, all right. You. If you put a one zero one, a comma and a thousand zeros, then that will be real. Okay. What about one billion zeros? That still not be true. If you put a one, one, and you have to put a comma, and you have to put all those years to make kid. it. It's a tough one thousand. To crack. Yeah, exactly. If you put one zero and then, j or if you just put one before the zero and just put one zero, it's ten dollars. It has value. But even if you put one billion zeros and don't put a one, there's no value. In the same way, if you don't remember Bhagwan while singing or playing or doing anything then there is no value to it. You understand? Bhagwan doesn't like it. So when you do anything, if you remember Bhagwan, then it has value. It's like putting billions of zeros after or before the one or after the one. You understand? So it will be a billion dollars. So in the same way, Swami, um, he's saying then, uh, hold on. While singing and the stroke of his kurtal, he finished the session in half an hour. So Swami sung and danced for half an hour. The musicians from Gwalior were all full of praise for Swami. Then Sriji Maharaj drew his attention towards the dancing floor. The musicians arose and saw for themselves that Swami had drawn with his toes and fingers, his, foot, his feet, a picture of an elephant in reverse motion. They bowed down to Maharaj and, and Swami and prayed, Oh, this saint is the treasure of arts. We are nothing before him. You know, Maharaj himself, Sriji Maharaj, uh, he, Sriji Bhagat, Maharaj himself, uh, in that time, was very pleased because he drew an elephant with his feet. Can you draw an elephant with your feet? Speak in the mic. Can you draw an elephant with your feet? No. No, but Swami did. And Swami could like that picture. Then. Swami did, yeah, just like that picture in reverse motion with his feet. Now, one of our uh, Swamis in uh, Puja Guruji's mandal, Puja Rasikwala Swami. Uh, yeah, I saw that video. He saw it, didn't you? Yeah, he made a. Elephant with his feet, with yeah. chanda, and you put, they put it up two times. It was there too. It was put it up in a big canvas. So yeah. Swami did the same kind of a dance, uh, a sixteen-minute dance. So it was very, um, very, very uh, artistic, and very good. So Puja Swami uh, himself performed such an act, saying that Bhagwan became pleased because Bhagwan did not become pleased because Swami drew an elephant with his feet. Why did Bhagwan become pleased? That's what I know, want to know from you. This is a tough question, my friend. Bhagwan became pleased mm -hmm. because he drew, because Bhagwan, he used his feet to draw elephant with Chandan for Maharaj. That's why Bhagwan... I mean, not that's why. Uh-huh. Is that why he became pleased? Because he, well then... He, I, he sang to Maharaj. That's why become that's why Bhagwan became pleased? Really? No. Then? Um Because he has a lot of talents? Is that why Bhagwan became pleased? Because he was dancing humbly. Yes. That's why Bhagwan became pleased. He was humble. Jay Bhagat Jay Swamnan. 
How you been? Good. Yeah? Almost the end of the story, but Rushi Swami is coming up, okay? So, Sriji Boy, what had happened was that he became pleased because of Swami's humbleness. Yes. Not because of Swami's talent. Everyone has talent, but those who possess talent and humbleness, Bhagwan becomes pleased. So, what should we possess? To be humble, to Maharaj, Guruji, and Santo. Meaning, no matter how much uh, good you became, uh, become in football, or on your iPad. Just be humble, saying it. That means like saying it means like saying. Um, or I don't care. I did it. It's just saying. I'll, I'm what about the most cuties you know? Is that boy? So you should be the best. You're the best bucket because you know the most cuties. Is no. that right? No. Nope. Then. You're the best bucket because Maharaj made you one. Yes, that's it. We are good bhagats, best bhagats because Maharaj and Guruji made us that way. If you remember that, then Bhagwan and Guruji will become pleased. Okay. You fill J Bhagat in on everything after this sabha. He'll fill you in. Okay, J Bhagat. So, sabha starts at 8 o'clock. 8 to 9. There's I, two sessions. I called him today. You did? He said he might come at uh -huh. some close to 8.30 or something. Okay. that's you're close. He's right on 8.30. Very good. Uh, now Puja Swami uh, will come and uh, he'll continue the lecture. Okay? Jai Swami Yes, ma'am. Varnivesharamaniyadarsanam Mandahasaruchirarnanam bhujam Poojitam suranaro tamair muda Dharmanandanam aham vichintai Dharmanandanam aham vichintai Sri Ganshyam Maharajani Jai Supreme Almighty, our beloved Kunsyam Maharaj, Path Maka Tour Liberation, Puja Bhatt Guruji, and all of you devotees, Jai Swami Narayan. Okay. As according to the Vachanamaru third of Loya, Bhagwan Swami Narayan himself narrated the stories of his devotees and Santo, and in those stories, we listen the stories of Muktan and Swami. And now, Today, Maharaj is going to narrate some other duty's story. But before starting the stories, I would like to ask some questions. Sriji Bhagat, if Bhagwan is present here in human form, and he, if he asks some money from you, then what would you do? I'll give him money. But you don't have money. Then... If you don't have any single coin in your pocket, then what would you do? Then I will 
then I'll go home and get my get the coins that I have. Okay, give to Jay Bhagat. Jay Bhagat, Jay Swami Narayan. Jay Swami Narayan. Okay, now Bhagwan asks some money from you, and if you don't have any single coin in your pocket, then what will you do? Take some from my mom. Okay. <laughs> give that Bhagat. What's your name? Uh, Vinay. Okay, Vinay Bhagat. Okay. Now, uh, for you, different question. If Bhagwan is present here in human form, and if he asks some money, Bhagwan said, uh, Vinay Bhagat, I really require some money. I really need. I don't have any single coin. If you give me some dollar, then I'll complete my some task remaining. Then what would you think? The question of giving money to Bhagwan that's the second thing. But first thing is that what would you think? That if Bhagwan need money or what? Is he Bhagwan or what? What would you think? Yeah, so it will be confused a little. <laughs> so because Bhagwan is like everything, right? Yes. But why is he asking money? Is first thing. Definitely it will be for some good thing. That yeah. is that's for sure. Mm. So if it is really needed, then I will try my level best to give him in all the means. Okay. Uh, okay, thank you. Yeah. That is the main thing that whenever Bhagwan is present in human form, then all scriptures describe the characteristic of Bhagwan as he whenever he is in he is present in human form, that he always behaves as an ordinary human being. Only in very rare cases or in very some uh, we can say that in very some difficult or some type of situation Bhagwan shows his divine powers otherwise he always behave and remain as an ordinary human being so that is why to develop or to cultivate our faith in the form of Bhagwan that is that is the difficult thing and sometimes even Bhagwan shows his divine powers to others only to make that person his duty or we can say to develop in the other's heart his faith. That is why Bhagwan sometimes shows the divine powers. Otherwise, Bhagwan normally behave as a human being. Whenever Bhagwan Swaminarayan manifested on this earth and he was living in Garuda at the time, Bhagwan was constructing a big temple in that village. So, after uh, starting the work of building the mandir, uh, after some times, Bhagwan become ill. Why? Because the workers who are working for the temple construction, they require their payment. I mean, their salary and everything. But Bhagwan at the time didn't have money sufficient for paying the salary to the workers. So at the time, Bhagwan, whoever devotees come to his darshan, Bhagwan. Everyone asks, Bhagat, how is your situation? Meaning, how is your financial situation? Are you, uh, I mean, your situation is uh, good or what? Then all the devotees, they come and they just say, Maharaj, we have enough and even more than enough money because of your mercy. After getting your blessings, I get too much money. So I'm happy with that. But no one asked, Bhagwan, would you, uh, Marad, would you like to, uh, or, I mean, would you need some money or what? Why are you asking this? But the another one devotee came after many devotees went and the another devotee, he came for the son of Bhagwan and he, uh, uh, Bhagwan, according to his, uh, according to his nature, he asked all the devotees and he also asked this devotee, that Bhagat, how is your financial situation? Then that devotee said, Maharaj, it is very good and better according to your grace upon me. Then, again, that devotee did not understand why Bhagwan asked me that question. But something sparked in his mind. As Bhagwan, asked, uh, Bhagwan talked something about the, his uh, like spiritual things, like how is your bhajan and niyam and everything, how is your... Dharam and everything. But after that again Bhagavan asked the same question. How is your financial situation? Are you good or better or what? Then again he said Maharaj it is your blessing upon me. 
so i am very fine then maharaj went for some task then the duty one swami is there then the duty asked that sant that swami why maharaj asked the same question is really bhagwan need some money then that swami say yes bhagat actually bhagwan uh, we have this uh, temple construction project in work and uh, the work is stopped now because the we don't have sufficient money to pay them for the work so bhagwan that is why he really need some money then that bhagat uh, when bhagwan came back and then he asked maharaj maharaj how much money you want i have more than uh, more than enough then maharaj say i need some amount bhagwan described that i want some 500 rupees at that time so that duty he actually from the other village so he uh, uh he asked for some time because he was not of that village then after getting darshan of maharaj he went for collecting money from someone so first he made the another devotee of that village dada khachar and he asked from him some money then he said bhagat i don't have money otherwise this is not a situation for bhagwan that bhagwan had to ask some money for the others if i have then i totally pay i i surrendered everything to bhagwan then the duty he went to meet another person in the village the another person who was at the time a uh, officer on behalf of the british company so he collected the monies from the villagers and he had to pay in the uh, meaning high district level to the government so but he had to pay every 3 months and he collected till the time so he had sufficient money so he was his friend so he asked him uh, i really need some money like 800 rupees he asked 800 bhagwan asked from him only 500 okay um, after that <coughs> that person he gave 800 rupees to that devotee the devotee came back to bhagwan and he offered 800 rupees bhagwan this is 500 for Uh, as you need for paying the salary to these workers and the another 200 rupees for maharaj has at the time uh too much debt so for paying that debt uh 200 rupees and the another 100 rupees is for uh giving rasoi to santos meaning giving thar to bhagwan and santo so for donation purpose so in this way the devotee gave 800 rupees to bhagwan so it is not that whenever we know that from the scriptures even that bhagwan is the source of all he is the almighty so whenever bhagwan is present he never require money or anything that is what our mentality but in reality whenever bhagwan is present in human form he behave as per the rules of uh, rules and regulations regarding for all the human beings only sometimes otherwise before starting this mandir bhagwan while hitting the earth by his right foot bhagwan shows the golden temple to the deity this is what his divine power if he desire to make a golden temple without making any single effort then he can make but when he desire to engage many devotees many santos to make a temple so that they can they all can get benefit from doing seva in the mandir so he used that way now here there is the st- uh, there is a story of the another devotee bhagwan himself narrated in the sabha that there was a devotee whose name was samant patel and he was from uh from the region of wadak in gujarat and his village was bambaniya okay he was very staunch devotee of bhagwan swami narayan right? 
वंस ही केम टू दर्शन फॉर भगवान इन गरडा देर भगवान इन द सेम वे भगवान वॉज सिटिंग अंडर द नीम ट्री एंड इन फ्रंट ऑफ हिम देर वॉज सम ड्यूटीज एंड सम संतोज एंड द असेंबली द डिस्कोर्सिस इज गोइंग ऑन एट द टाइम ही केम इन टू द सभा ही डिड दर्शन ऑफ भगवान ही पोस्ट्रेटेड बिफोर भगवान आफ्टर दैर आफ्टर कंक्लूडिंग द असेंबली वैन ही पर्सनली केम नियर टू हैव दर्शन ऑफ भगवान ही टच भगवान होली फीट एंड टच हिज हैंड्स टू हिज हेड आफ्टर कंप्लीटिंग ऑल दिज रिचुअल्स एज सामंत पटेल सेट इन फ्रंट ऑफ भगवान भगवान एज हाउ डू भगत then samant patel said maharaj it is all because of your grace i am very fine then maharaj say i need some money do you have some money then without asking single question how much money or nothing bhagat say yes maharaj i have too much money please wait for some time then the duty return to his home actually he was very poor he don't have uh, any not too much money in his home so he sold out his house his farm he had some cows and the other cattle he everything he sold out and whatever amount he get it is written here 400 uh, 4500 rupees at the time that was too much so he collected all these 4500 rupees and came back to garuda for darshan of maharaj and he surrendered all these rupees to bhagwan then bhagwan asked him but how did you get this money is this yours or others then he said no mara this is my and this is i have saved all this money for you from uh, last uh, many years i desire to give this money to you and that is why i have collected this then because bhagwan knew everything even not what we are doing even not we are what we are thinking but even what we are doing in our dream or what we are doing in our sleep state bhagwan all knew about this whether sri ji bhagwan is doing masti here in mandir bhagwan knows everything jai bhagat is not memorizing any kadi or kirtan then bhagwan also knows it so in this way bhagwan knew about this samant patel situation that he had not any single money in his home but he sold out everything and he collected money and he gave me so bhagwan again asked bhagat please speak true this is our rules then the bhagat because bhagwan want to narrate uh, bhagwan want to show this uh, the greatness of this devotee to the other devotees and other santos so that others can learn from this devotee's life that whenever bhagwan ask something from us we have to give everything because everything whatever we have all given us by bhagwan so whenever bhagwan ask something from us then at that time without any delay we have to surrender everything to bhagwan and then samant patel he narrated how he get this money bhagwan knew but bhagwan want to show the greatness of his, this duty to others and as samant patel narrated this then bhagwan said okay i accept only 1000 rupees and the remaining please take then that samant patel said no maharaj i have surrendered this you so this is not my money this is yours and yours i cannot take so bhagwan said but without money you don't have farm you don't have cattle you don't have your home then when you your uh, wife your children where you stay and how did you eat even how you feed your children so please take this money back then the devotee said no maharaj as i am patel so ah uh, then maharaj said what will you do for feeding your children then the devotee said oh maharaj that's the very simple for me 
I migrate to another village and there I borrow some grains from anyone from the village and even I myself make a small hut using some wooden stick and grass. I lived in that home and as I borrow some grain from the villagers so my children and the, my family totally depend upon that grains and I will work in someone's farm as a worker, as a laborer and after laboring for some months or years I'll get some money and uh, as gradually I save the money after that I, it will be everything is smooth and no problem so Maharaj say Maharaj become extremely pleased upon that devotee but Uh, Bhagwan narrated his story in the Vachanamrut. Vachanamrut is not uh, scriptures which describe any life incident of Bhagwan or any other devotees. But still, this is a philosophical book, philosophical scriptures, and still Bhagwan narrated this story of the devotee in these scriptures. Why? Because he had renounced his uh, renounced public ridicule. Otherwise, what if you? do such kind of things then the other definitely tease you by saying oh this is a great Bhagat he has even sold out his home he has sold out, sold out his farm and everything for Bhagwan. in this way people would talk regarding this and still without thinking what will others say this devotee did what Bhagwan desired and that is why Bhagwan become extremely pleased upon that devotee and Bhagwan narrated his story in the Vachanamrut. This is what the story of Samant Patel. Now, after this story, Bhagwan also narrated many other stories like an Ahir, uh, okay, Samant Patel Ahir from Vadak reason. After that, Bhagwan narrated the stories of Mulji and Krishnaji of the village Mankua, the two Kathi devotees of the village Gundali and many other devotees. But this Mulji and Krishnaji of the village Mankua, the story of these two devotees, that's very amazing and one cannot even think of doing this. Even know any other scriptures like even know any other scriptures of Hindu religion or any other religion like Christianity or the, any other religion in the world there is no such kind of stories written in the history this is the very unique history because they both desire to become a son from childhood they both were the friends just like Sriji and Jay they both were friends now Sriji Bhagat uh, just as Krishnaji and Murji they have decided Whenever Krishna Krishna ji said to Murji, whenever you get Bhagwan, please inform me. And I get Bhagwan, I'll inform you. So we will both, after getting Bhagwan, his darshan, we will surrender our life to him and we will do bhajan of Bhagwan. We will worship him throughout our life. We do not want to engage ourselves in social life. So Krishna ji and Murji, they both, one of them, once went to Garuda with the other devotees and he did darshan of Bhagwan. Then he realized that no, uh, this is a true Bhagwan because of some divine power shown to him by Bhagwan. And even uh, after entering the village, he even experienced some peace, uh, some inner peace. So that by his experience, he understood that here definitely there will be Bhagwan. Otherwise, such kind of calmness or inner happiness I can I never experience anywhere in the world. So after getting darshan of Bhagwan, when he came back, he returned to his village, Mankua in Kach region. Then he explained this experience to his friend Murji, and they both decided. Then Murji asked him if that really he is Bhagwan, then why will you return here? If you get Bhagwan, then you definitely have to remain there. 
then the krishna ji said no i only came back here to inform you according to our promise to each other that who will get bhagwan first should inform the others so after getting this information regarding bhagwan krishna ji and murji they both decided to become a sant and dedicated their total life to bhagwan in the service of bhagwan so now sri ji bhagat you get bhagwan and after that if you decided to become a son and bhagwan make a condition for you if you have a written permission from your parents then and then i'll make you a son then what will you do first you want to become a son or not if guruji makes me i will only if guruji makes right only if guruji makes me yeah. okay you want to become sant or not i will become a sant if guruji says i am okay and jay bhagat no, no i want i want to help them make more mandirs okay <laughs> no problem if sri ji bhagat as guruji told you suppose guruji came here and you go to guruji's darshan and guruji ask you sri ji bhagat i want to make you sant would you like to become a sant then what would you say i would say okay 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 but guruji asks you then go to your home and uh, give me a return permission from your parents to make you sant then what would you do now go and ask uh-huh. and then i'll come back and, and tell guruji okay but if suppose your parents deny you to give permission later then what would you do i'll give it still uh if so i'll just tell guruji they just want me to become a sadhu later then guruji said okay if you don't have permission later then i do not want to make you sant and guruji rejected you then then i won't become sant how if I, if, if, if you I'm, you live with your parents right so actually you, you you remain with your parents you do not want to become a sant i do why you said as guru ji told me if you have no permission then you don't uh, you, uh, i'll not make you sant then you stay with your parents is it's very is your desire to become a sant if guru ji tells me to i will become a sant okay if guru ji doesn't okay. i won't we will discuss this question next sunday sri ganesh yam maharaj